I want to bring in Senator Chris Coons. He is a Democrat from Delaware. And Senator, you're known as someone who reaches across the aisle to their colleagues. Uh, tell me what you're hearing from your Republican colleagues tonight. Well, Nora, this has been a very difficult day in the United States Capitol, um, a day that began with a recognition that more than a dozen of my Republican colleagues intended to do something uh, unprecedented uh, in that they were going to challenge as a group um, the election and try and disenfranchise millions of voters. Uh, but like the impeachment trial of nearly a year ago, I think most of us who slogged into the Capitol today thought we knew the outcome and thought we knew that this would be a mostly boring and long evening of speeches, constitutionally significant, troubling, but unremarkable. Instead, as you know, we suffered an assault on the Capitol of the United States. We saw chaos. And on my way over here, I went past in the rotunda the litter, the garbage, the mess that was left behind by hundreds of protesters, rioters, thugs, who took possession of the United States Capitol, and dozens of fully equipped armored troops, troops wearing battle armor, resting after a day taking back control of our nation's capital. That changed the votes of about half of my Republican colleagues who earlier in the day had intended to object. We just had an hour and a half of debate on the Senate floor where there were compelling and moving speeches by Republicans and Democrats. The majority leader, the minority leader, and senators knew and seasoned. But this is a moment, Nora, we have to stop and reflect and look at what's just happened today. President Trump fired up these crowds, brought them here from across our nation, and unleashed them on our capital. The world is watching this today. Our children are watching this tonight. And we have to change course. We have to take back the direction of our democracy. So my question for my Republican colleagues as we sat huddled together, having been evacuated from the Senate floor, was, is this the night the fever will break and you will show some independence from this dangerous demagogue of a president we still have? Nor I'm well, confident that two weeks from today, Joe Biden will be sworn in as the next president of the United States. And we have to take this opportunity to begin healing and moving past where President Trump has led us today. And on that question of whether the fever broke, you still had six of your Republican Senate colleagues, however, um, proceed with an objection and vote against the Arizona electors. I do. A number of the senators who changed their votes are ones who, as you said in your introduction, I have a friendship with, I have legislated with. And a number of those who are insisting on continuing with their objection are several with ambitions to run for the presidency themselves, several who are newly seated senators. But I don't forgive any of them. Because just a few days ago, all of us took a, an oath, swore an oath, to defend the Constitution. What's happening on the floor of the Congress this evening, what happened here in the halls of Congress today, threatens that very Constitution and our democratic order. So my hope is that the, con the constituents of those senators who voted tonight to disenfranchise millions, to overturn this election, and to try and move forward Trump's scheme, this attempted coup today in the capital of the United States, that they would be dishonored by having cast those votes and that their constituents would send them an unmistakable message about how they feel about what happened here in the Capitol today. Senator, I have to ask you about the, the state of our nation, um, the security of our nation. There are reports that a number of the president's national security advisors are considering resigning. Uh, Margaret Brennan, our moderator of Face the Nation, has reported there are cabinet members who are considering invoking the 25th Amendment. And there are press reports that the president, in the words of Maggie Haberman of The New York Times, has lost it. Um, he has said he will not concede. Are you concerned and would you support an effort by some of your House colleagues to move forward with a second impeachment trial in the final two weeks of the Trump presidency? Well, look, Nora, this is a moment of great peril for our nation. We have a president who's demonstrated an unhinged allegiance to a conspiracy theory in which he actually won the election that he lost two months ago. I think we cannot 
coddle this leader any further. I think we cannot tolerate the sorts of actions he took that led to today any further. And we need to take the steps you, that will be effective in the next two weeks. You That's think he should be removed leadership. from office? You think he should be removed from office? My hope is that his cabinet, his vice president, his closest advisors will move him along and get him to accept the outcome of the election that happened two months ago. Nor, I'll remind you, in the last two months, he's ignored a raging pandemic and he's fueled the fires of division. He's mostly tweeted and indulged himself and golfed. He has utterly abandoned his post as president in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of a Russian hack of our national security systems. He doesn't deserve the presidency anymore, and we need to do what we can to ensure a peaceful, stable transition to President-elect Joe Biden. Not to mention the millions of Americans who are waiting for a vaccine. Senator Chris Coons of Delaware, thank you so much.